In this tutorial, we're going to look at this piston I've created. It's based on a little Lego piston uh, that I had sitting on my desk, but you could use this for any kind of hydraulic system where you have two linked parts that need to point at each other. What I want to be able to do is move this top ring uh, and have the piston stay centered inside of this tube. Same with the bottom ring. If I grab and move that, I want to make sure that everything stays connected properly. So the way to do this is with a set of constraints. The first problem is how do you keep these tubes connected to these rings without using any parenting? If I parent them, I'm going to end up with this sort of situation where translating or rotating the ring will uh, cause the bottom tube to translate and rotate along with it. We need to break the system up a little bit more than that, which is something that constraints are really good at. So I'm going to head to a front view here and take a look at some of the parts we have. This top ring has its pivot point centered right here in the middle. You can see I have a little selection handle that shows the center. Same with the bottom ring. That's where its pivot point is, which means any rotation, uh, translation, or scaling will be based on that point. Now these parts, the cylinders, I want to get their pivot points up to match their respective rings so that rotations and uh, translations will be based on the same center point. So I'm going to grab this top tube here and if I select either the insert key or the D key on the keyboard that'll switch my manipulator into this little pivot point translation mode. So that just moved the pivot point up here. When I want to be precise about that. I'm going to hold down the D key for the pivot point and then I can also hold the V key which is going to enable vertex snapping. And you can see when I switch to that I get a little circle at the center of the manipulator. Now if I just move anywhere near a vertex or in this case the selection handle counts as well I get a precise snap. Okay so now the center of the tubes pivot point is right up here where the ring is. I'm going to repeat that procedure down below. I'm going to pick this tube here and I'm going to hold down the D key for the pivot point move and V for the snap. And I've just middle mouse clicked on that vertex that I want to go to, or in this case the selection handle. And once again I have a nice uh, pivot point set up. Okay, so the next thing I want to do here is set up a point constraint. And when you're using constraints, the first thing you'll do is select the target of the constraint and then shift select the constrained object. In the animation menu set you can see the constraint menu item. First one in that menu is the point constraint and I'll head to the options for that. Here I'm going to edit reset settings just to clear out any weird stuff I might have in there and I'm going to go with the defaults so by simply clicking add I've just constrained the top tube to the top ring. So now whenever I move that top ring, I get the top tube moving along with it. You'll notice, unlike parenting, if I rotate or scale this ring, it doesn't affect the tube. The point constraint is only for translation. Okay, I'm going to repeat the process down below. So I'm going to select the bottom ring and shift select the bottom tube and head up to constrain point. Okay, now I'm going to deal with the problem of the rotation. When I move the top ring, I want this bottom tube to rotate so that it stays aimed at the center point of the ring and same with the top tube pointing at the bottom ring. To do this we're going to use an aim constraint. So in this case I'll select the top ring as the uh, object of the constraint and then shift select the bottom tube. Now I'm going to head up to the constraint aim options. I'll go ahead and reset the settings here. And in this case, the uh, box is a little more complicated than the point constraint. I have to deal with the aim and up vectors, which determine which axis of this object is actually going to be pointing at the uh, object that it's aimed at. So by default, it sets this up for x, y, and z in these three boxes. The first one is set to a 1, so that means that x is the choice right now for the aim vector. If I switch that to a zero and change the Y on by hitting a one in there, uh, now we're going to be aiming the Y axis, which is the up axis of this object or the direction it was initially created. So I've got the aim set up properly, but I also have to consider the second vector, which is the up vector. 
And the up is used to avoid any kind of twists or rolls that you'll get in the object as you're animating the scene. And I'm going to choose X in this case. And go ahead and apply this. So what you'll see now is when I move the top object, the bottom object there is aimed at it. This is pretty similar to the way the cameras, two node cameras and lights work in Maya if you've used those before. And that works pretty well. One problem we're going to see, however, is if I switch to a perspective view and start to translate on Z, you'll, did you notice this little uh, tube at the bottom flipped? Suddenly it's pointing in the wrong direction. So the problem here is that my x-axis as the up axis is not enough information for it to figure out where to rotate this tube. So I'm going to go ahead and undo the creation of that aim constraint. And this time, instead of just specifying a direction, I'm going to specify an object for the x-axis to point at. This means that we'll have an object to point at um, to avoid any kind of flips or rolls that can be animated or moved around to avoid problems later. So for this, I'm going to just create a locator. And I'll go ahead and snap that into position. And I'm going to name this guy. We'll call this bottom aim. Okay. And now I'm going to reselect the top ring, bottom tube, and head back to constrain aim options. Okay. This time, instead of saying that the world up type is default of vector, with a y-axis for the world up. I'm going to say let's go ahead and use an object up and name the object down here. This is uh, the bottom aim. Okay, so this means that when I apply this now the y-axis is pointed at this target and the x-axis is pointed at this target over here. From a perspective view now you'll see that we're not going to flip this guy and if we ever did encounter a situation where we ended up twisting that object, let me head down below here, I can always move this little locator to correct any flips that we get. Okay, so this is a more robust system, and if you've ever dealt with inverse kinematics solutions, you've probably done a similar aim object for elbows and knees and it's solving the same sort of problem that we have in character rigging. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this process for the top. I'm going to go ahead and create a locator and snap that up here to the top ring, pull it off to the side. I'll name that one top aim. It's pretty useful to name these guys so that you're not searching for uh, things called locator 7 in your scene when you're setting up the constraints. It's good to have uh, a good naming convention. Okay, so now I'm going to select my bottom ring first and the top tube. So I'm going to be constraining to this bottom ring. Head up to Constrain, Aim, Options. Okay, and there's two things that I have to take care of. First of all, I'm going to aim at the top, not Tom, but top aim object for the world up. And the aim vector, if I leave it as is, is actually going to flip this tube around because you can see that the top tube is pointing straight up, which means that the positive Y is going to flip around. Let me go ahead and show you. If I apply that, it's just taking the top of the object and pointed it down at the ring, which is what we asked it to do, but not what we want. What I want to do is send the negative of the Y. So here in the constraint options where it says aim vector, one for y, I'm going to set that to negative one. And now when I apply it, it uses the opposite of that y, or the negative y. Okay, so now it's pointing properly at the bottom ring, and the bottom tube is pointing properly at the top ring, and we have a working system. So I'll get this stuff out of the way here, and hide these little dimensions. Okay, now you can see we have a nice little piston.